What's up, everybody? This is Edward back with another video, another episode of Everybody Hates Black Men. I'm your host, Edward Anderson. I got a video I want to talk about real quick. Now, I'm actually not going to do a play-by-play on this. And I know I always say I'm going to do a couple of minutes and it ends up being a lot longer than that. But for real, I'm very serious because I got other stuff to do. But I, I definitely want to comment on this. I wanted to comment on this video. So I um shout out to Nubis. He's in my um he's in my Discord. And actually if you all want to, you know, get in my Discord, here's an opportunity to get in there right now. Um, you know, if you want to, I'll drop the link uh and I'll prove you all in there. And I will be removing that link while I'm doing this, especially the few times that I have my um my Discord link out. It is lit in there. But I want to talk about this real quick. So this is, you know, Anton has done this. And, you know, shout out to Anton doing what he's doing. And, um, you know, I always jump on stage still. And here, here's my thing. She's the perfect example of, like, what a tragic mulatto is. She is perfect. I mean, my Telegram, like, um, get if you get in the Discord, I mean, Telegram... The thing about the yeah, the uh, thing about the Telegram is I have private Telegrams, and then I have like the broadcast one. The broadcast one I actually have to work on, so we'll we'll do the Telegram in a, in a little bit. But I wanted to um really break this down, so I'm not going to do a play by play on this. I want y'all to watch the video, and then I may talk about it later on. But the thing about Sage Steel is this: at the end of the day, Sage Steel issue is is some something that Xanatos Clutch talks about. I don't think it affects him like that, but he talks about it, which is he, um Xanatos Clutch doesn't agree with the one drop rule. Sage Steel doesn't like a one drop rule. Sage Steel, she hates the one drop rule. She despises the one drop rule. She doesn't see herself as black. And she can't stand that she's put in a black box. It very much affects her in a negative way. She thought she could get a white man, get around it. She thought she could, um, this is, this is why these women value whiteness, by the way, because they, this is, and by the way, this is why they like to project this shit on men. At the end of the day, a man, black men know that I don't care if, I don't even care if you're talking about Charles Barkley. I don't care if you're talking about, um, Justice Thomas. They, they know they're black men. They don't like e even OJ. Despite the 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 movie, uh, the the song with Jay Z, I'm not black, I'm OJ. Black men don't have for generally African American men don't have this delusion. African American men do not have this delusion that somehow you can fuck your way out of. I mean, I mean, even um, Donovan Sharp will tell you, like black men don't believe that you can fuck your way out of blackness. You can't. Like they don't believe your kid. They know we understand our kids are going to be seen as black. Um, even though Brandon Tatum is one of the few that actually has the balls to actually call that out, but um, to white people in their face. But we understand that unless unless you look um, um, black or maybe you get like like a Mahomes kind of pass kind of thing because they can't find a white person. So yeah, like shit, we'll we'll, we'll go with you. But even then, you're still not white. Dak Prescott is mixed, but he's black. Black men don't have this delusion. Okay. Black men do not have this delusion, but women definitely do. And 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 a lot of them is the closer to whiteness they get, the worse off they are. You know, you know, when you look at like Meghan Markle, Meghan Markle is pretty much passing. But Meghan Markle, there's certain things that white people reveal to her that they, they wouldn't even say to me because, like I said, because she looks white. She looks like, okay, she could be European or something, but she looks white. And so at the same, so they don't pay attention to that like that. So they'll, they'll say what they really feel. Like right now, it's a video um, on TikTok that's going viral of this white chick that basically, she acts like she's speaking truth to power when she, what she's saying is absolutely ignorant. And I'm going to segue from the main topic for a second, but she's talking about how um, basically responding to Beyonce and basically saying country music is not for black people. And I'm like, bitch, you wouldn't have country music if it wasn't for us. We literally gave that to you because the culture, for different reasons, moved on from it. You wouldn't have, like, this is not something we co-did. You wouldn't have country music if it wasn't for us. That is something that Black people came up with. All the forms. And we moved. And, and by the way, rock and roll, Black people came up with. 
which, you know, a lot of conservatives, they like to hark to a different time, but still try to remain be, to be pseudo hip. So they'll, you know, they'll speak to rock and roll. You know, these things, they're not co-done. They are ours. We just don't push them like that. And I'm sure it'll be once upon a time where they'll try to say hip hop didn't come up with black people, but she didn't, she doesn't know shit. And that's probably why it's going viral because even white people, there's even plenty of white people that understand that they know, even country folks, they understand that um, country music is a black medium. They would prefer to, to they, they impose their white identity onto it. And even if they would prefer to keep that, keep it that way, they don't want to see an insurge of a whole bunch of black folks. They know, they know at the end, they know black people came up with it. But then you got these younger generations of uh folks that they 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 are honestly ignorant. And and they're ignorant on purpose. They they are they are made to be that on purpose. That's part of a lot of stuff. Um, and so she was really talking as this, you know, I'm just, I'm just tired. I'm just tired of, you know, it's not for black people. And then you could tell that when she's making this comment that she honestly does not know, like she wouldn't believe it if a black person said it, like, but it would really, if, if, if a white person, she respected, like if a Dolly Parton were to say that, you know, country music, it, it would really, she would have an existential crisis. Like she would have a crisis of identity because then she would uh, even in her racism she'd still believe what she wants to believe but at the same time it it it, it would just conflict and this is what i've always told you all about um certain attitudes and how certain attitudes um Certain attitudes, you know, people hold on to certain attitudes and certain beliefs because without them, um, it will fuck them up. It will, it will fuck them up. Like, I don't think y'all really understand how much people hold on to certain beliefs. And if you really challenge those beliefs, um, it, it, will, it will really fuck them up. I'm trying to see if I can find it. It would really fuck them up. It would. It, it, I mean, they they would. It would. It would. It would give them a psychic break. It would give them a psychic break. Not to mention that fifty five percent of our population is in the South. That's another funny thing too. Like every, I don't know why people think black people are only in the cities. Fifty five percent of the black po- the majority of the black population today is in the south, and you're, and that's actually increasing as more people. It's actually a lot less black people in the west. They're mainly a lot of us are mainly on the east coast, and they're in the south, and they're more so are coming to the south. So it's actually very funny. It's actually very funny. Um, people saying that now, granted, I'm not a fan of country music, never have been. I have family members that like country music for the most part outside of some songs. I can't fucking stand it. So I personally, I personally don't give a shit, but, um, let me, let me show you what I'm talking about. Let me show y'all, so y'all know I'm not bullshitting. I know y'all know I ain't bullshitting, but you know, for, for people that may find this video, we liked, we like to do receipts when they're readily available. So this is what I'm talking about, you know, this chick right here. Black. You're not country. So I really didn't want to respond to this video. So, you know, obviously people are going to now that's not the video. She does a whole rant. It was even a couple, it's it's like even a lot of white people. It's like, uh no. And people it's funny because people are not out and the reason why people are not really outraged, outraged, outraged about it, because they can cause you can tell in this video, oh, she really doesn't know. And so to be honest, there's a lot of black people that kind of find this kind of humorous. Because it's like, first of all, black people there's there are black people like country, but for a lot of black people, but they don't care. That's why it got as white as it was, because it's like, you know, people, you know, and there's a there's a size of a black population that likes country music. And it just is what it is, right? And there's a couple of black people in country music, but the thing about it is, when you have like, um, 
somebody like Beyonce with the kind of weight she can bring in the music industry, you know, it bothers them because they actually know that she could, they, they very much know she could start a trend. She could start a trend of people coming, people coming into country music. And to be honest with you, there's been a couple of songs that's really been bangers that um been on social media that's kind of come up. So they, they know and they're afraid. <laughs> I understand that. So, um, like her, this what she's saying is is such a level of a blonde moment that people, it's it's almost funny how people, even black people, are kind of like. I've seen a couple of reactions to this. Nobody's like really angry because people very much realize, bitch, you don't know, and they kind of know that when when a white person inevitably. If she gets on social media too much, because there are plenty of white people that are kind of saying, ah, even if I don't like black people, ah, yeah. you know, even they don't deny where it comes from. They just don't talk about it. They don't even like the conversation, because, again, if you ask them, they're going to kind of be accurate. Truth be told, you go to Nashville, Tennessee, a lot of black people there, a lot more than you think. I know I was surprised. But anyway, that's just a side note. It's a few. Yeah, so it it bothers it bothers them very much so. Yeah, I don't even want to speak on Lil Nas X. I really don't. Because for him to do what he did, you know, like the route he could have went and what he did go. And, and here's the irony of that. The irony of that is had he stayed there, he probably could have did a video with Beyonce. He could have probably had a feature. But what he did, I don't even want to speak his name. I don't even want to speak his name. But no, nah, we're not. Um... But ultimately, what's up, Carl? But ultimately, they, they know when that bomb drops and she figures it out, she may get on TikTok and just have some, some like, yell, yell, full Karen mode because she's going to be yelling against reality. So most people aren't even mad about that. But back to... um. But back to um uh I wouldn't I wouldn't no nah, I wouldn't um I understand what you're saying and I'm not really disagreeing with what you're saying but I wouldn't tell I wouldn't tell tell I mean I wouldn't tell Taylor Swift to do an R and B album. I wouldn't tell her to do that. That's not her lane. And and I mean, honestly, at this point in her career, she really doesn't have anything to prove. At the end of the day, she's white. White people fuck with her. She's a billionaire as a musician. There's really nothing you can say. I mean, what is it? I mean, there's certain people. People will work for her. People won't work for her. It's really nothing to prove. I mean, I'm I mean, I'm not saying she's a great artist. The thing is, she's she's kind of she kind of occupies a kind of a lot of when I heard a lot of music people have the same opinion as her that she kind of has with Drake, except Drake's a little bit more light than Taylor Swift. Um, by like musicians, like uh, it, it is what it is. It's pop music at the end of the day, and at the end of the day, it is what it is. And I'm not here to defend Taylor Swift at all, but it is what it is. She's been anointed America's white woman, and really, the more the more people attack her, the more you're gonna make her a victim. The more you make her a victim, you low key make her a martyr. This is kind of I know you not attacking her. You're just saying issue the challenge. Get that. But this is why I got very mad at um whichever person did that um that AI attack on her because all you did was make her a victim. You're not gonna mar her. You're actually gonna make her more money. You're gonna make her more sympathetic, which shuts down stuff that she has done. You know um. It, it does. It, you're just not gonna win. You have to approach it. People are gonna have to approach a different tactic. I'm not talking about you, McDrama Bear. I'm talking about like I'm just piggyback off what you said. Um, I, as far as Beyonce and Beyonce actually taking a risk, it is a risk. But at the same time, is it like is it? Beyonce's from Texas. She's from Houston, so she's got the culture. So people forget that. If you actually look at how Beyonce carries herself, Beyonce does not carry herself like a city person. She's not really rural, but she carries herself. I hate to use the term antebellum, but she kind of has that. You know, uh, like obviously we know antebellum has a lot of slavery connotations to it. But I'm talking about as far as how she carries, like how she actually carries herself, not what she projects to sell songs. So this is not as big of a leap as I think. I think she's the country is she's the least city of any chick that ever was in Destiny Child. Maybe Michelle, 
but I would say even less than that. It's at least city. So this, I'm not saying, so this is probably more in the line with how she actually is, to be honest. So I don't see it as big of a leap as people think. Now, she still did the music, and she could have got critique, but you got to remember when she did it. Beyonce's in the tail end of her career. She's 40. She can do tours. She'll be remembered and all of that. But as far as like this ability, this is kind of like an afternoon. It's what else was she going to do? Another of the same shit. This was smart and kudos to her team. This was a smart move because it's different. It keeps her in there. You know, her, she has a big enough audience. Even if people get polarized with it, 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 it does what music's supposed to do. And for the most part, it's good music from what I hear. I don't like country music or so whatever. And, you know, it is what it is. It also gives her, you know, the same stuff that you're saying. She's a risk taker. She's this. It gives her another song in her portfolio. It's different music that can apply to a different setting. It's a business move. And uh, remember, she's a Texas chick at the end of the day. People forget that. And I'm not hating. I'm not saying it's not a risk, but I don't think it's this, like, you know, beyond thing um, that it is. And as far as white people, yeah, they're going to be upset because... Because they think, because they don't understand that a lot of, look, I'm not saying white people have no culture, but they, but you have to understand the whiteness is not its own thing. All these ethnic groups that make up what white is, yeah, they have culture within their own ethnic group, but out, but, but, but country, but outside of that, you know, when they, when they brought this thing, this hodgepodge thing called whiteness, that's its own thing. Even Tom Holland called that out. When America was talking about certain things like, well, we came up with the hamburger. Tom Holland said, no, nah, the hamburger came up, was come up with um, in Germany, you know, from from a town called Hamburg, Hamburg, he said, which is actually real. He basically called out like everything that it was somebody that was saying like what American was. And he basically get like on the spot, gave them where that really came from. Motherfucker didn't even know what to do. It was like an interview. It was one of these things that was kind of meant to be jokey, but he was kind of dead serious about it. And dude didn't kind of know what to do with that. He, like, he just kind of laughed it off because he was like, damn, I didn't know that. Yeah. And, that, and, and doing a gospel album, yeah, that was smart. You're actually right, Christian. That's actually a good point. Yeah. And so... And, and and honestly, personally, I'm not a fan of country music, but where we are in rap right now, like rap has just gotten straight niggerish. And that's the corporations. The corporations basically turn rap into porn. Basically, we're gonna it's the same model that they have with porn where we get these bitches, we run we run these bitches to as many, you know, they're young, they're young, they're young, then we they move them up in cycles. They're young, they're this or that, and then some of them are going to crash, most of them are going to crash out, and then we move on again. That's what 360 deals are. They basically run through them. They did the same thing in music. So basically, they use the music in order to elevate the artists. This is why they don't like putting out albums, because the albums don't sell. Now you, you the value of your artist goes down. So the music is just completely gone to shit. And so, yeah, our culture is beyond urban culture. Black cult, urban culture is not our cold urban culture is a subset of black culture. Urban culture is not black culture. And and the problem is that we we have allowed for the 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 this is a whole different video and, and this is kind of jumping into the overall conversation I'm I'm having with about the Sage Steel thing. But our culture is way bigger. This is why I don't I can't stand the fact black people don't like talk about culture. Our culture is way beyond what urban culture is. Yet urban culture has been established as the as like the de facto culture. It is a big part of the culture, but it's not the only thing. And as a result, as a people, we've kind of low-key become stagnant. The bitch you can't depend on the bitches because the bitches they just they just the bitches don't establish what's cool. We we tell them what cool is, and they and, and they try to gr gravitate to it. Now you have exceptions to this rule, but as a rule, this is what it is. Soft guy air is a perfect example. Notice how they do their own they did their own stupid shit. Like they try to say you're gay, you're lame, you're soft, you're this, and and notice how small that is. We as we do shout out the Mark and Lil Goody. They established soft guy era. Um, they actually he actually explains in a video. Then I may upload what Soft Guy Era is, what it is, what it's about, like in a very serious way. In like I think a minute and a half, he actually has a chart too, like a little four-point chart, really cool. Um, 
Let me see if I can pull that up so you can see that. Um, and so, yeah, and, 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 and it, 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 that's what it is. I mean, and shout out to SWP who's done, I got to tell you, these videos he did when it comes to white psychology and stuff like that, they're very good. They actually come very well in this. Some of y'all, somebody needs to find the original video of this country music album and push it to them. Um, yeah, so, um, so yeah, so, and, and as a result, we, you know, black men have kind of lost their godhood because Nick dudes are too busy trying to you know, keep these bitches from jumping off the cliff. And the reality is y'all, they gonna have to just crash out and we're gonna have to restart. Let them crash out. I mean, a lot of y'all want to save these chicks from crashing out. No, they want to crash out. They want to be on some, I don't want to be black no more. Let them be on their own. Let them be women without a country. Let them be women. Um, He said more proof. JT Beyonce, a devil worker, and they just want money because most black artists would do a gospel point to get back I'm, I'm assuming you're being sarcastic. I mean, at the end of the day, most black, I mean, honestly, honestly, um, Christian, a lot of people think you're a devil worshiper. You have a lot of black people that think any black person with money, they had to sacrifice their soul. That just had to have happened. You got black people that they're convinced of that. If you actually go deep into that conversation, they will, they, like a lot of, especially when they be on that, they will act like that. Soft guy era is or you just simply hate the soft guy era, this video is for you. Shout out to my fellow Mark, Mark Pillard, for dropping a slideshow on Instagram explaining what this is. So if you didn't know, me and my brother Goody started the soft guy era a few weeks ago, and it's going viral. We have been wreaking havoc on the internet, and so have the rest of y'all. We love the support. Keep dropping y'all videos. Let's keep making them mad. So now we're going into detail on what this is. The idea. Men in their soft guy era want to find high value women who can take care of them in ridiculous ways. Yes, we do. They want us to have money. I want my woman to have money as well. It's only right. Drizzle, drizzle. The soft guy era is a response to the soft girl era of 2023. It mocks videos in which women demand ridiculous things from men. It twists a mnemonic device from YouTuber Letitia Pude, aka the Sprinkle Sprinkle Lady. It's a supervision of alpha male content. And then here's the kicker, and this is what they don't like. The four points. Women say they want equality, but then some demand the most unequal situation. This, this nigga got a whole chart. Just from men. And this includes men paying all the bills, but the woman is making money as well, but she doesn't want to come out of pocket because she's a woman, right? Doesn't make sense. That doesn't sound equal to me. Now we're going to go down to insight. If men acted like this, they'd be laughed out the room. See, now when women are hearing these things, they're like, oh, this is ridiculous. No way. You want a mom. You want. Don't this sound like purple pill strategy? I Did I not? Did I, I want to play this? Cause did I not tell you all this? I didn't say it like, you know, the way he's saying it because I didn't come up with it. But did I not tell you all this? This is from the dude that came up with it. I'm glad he put his face to it so people can't just run away with it. You know, because that's what happened with Passport Bros. You want a parent. You want a, you want a man. No. We just want what you guys want from us in return. Now on to the advantage. Men believe they bring a lot to the. It don't. It don't matter doing a behind the scenes. That don't even matter because at the end of the day, I like at the end of the day, it'd be different. But all these dudes have shown a lot of these dudes have shown their faces. You see what they about. You see what they on. It ain't like it's some closet in cells or something. You know the bullshit they typically like to say. Um, and this video has like four hundred and seventy five thousand um, views. It only was posted up I think yesterday. At the end of the day, nobody needs a behind the scenes because it doesn't matter. They're still gonna be mad. They're still going to be mad. I mean, we've been saying it's a joke. Everybody has been saying it's a joke f from the beginning, yet they're still mad. They're going to be mad regardless. Everybody knows it. Even the wi some women know it's a joke, but they're still mad, which makes it even more fucking ridiculous. The table, so maybe they are now the table. See, a lot of men don't realize they are the table. If a man is paying all the bills, sir, you are the table. You're providing for a woman and your children. 
you are the table. But a lot of men don't realize who they are. So they really don't know they've been manipulated into living old fashioned ways. That shit is over and it's dead. These women get money now. It's time to spend that money now and contribute and work as a team. Eve was made to be a helpmate to Adam. Let's not play. Now the strategy. Show how outrageous it is when men demand to be provided for in the same equality. We all know being a provider in 2024 is a scam, so we don't care. So we're not doing that anymore. We know that's old fashioned. These women got money. These women are working, so they need to contribute. We want a helpmate. If you don't know what the yeah, so it's not, it doesn't matter because they're 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 in a perpetual state of rage. So it's a, you we can and and that just goes to show you how messed up it is. Like this ain't no trick. I mean, ain't ain't like ain't nobody trying to like it's them. It, it, we're not lying. We're, we've people have said it's a joke from the beginning, yet they still want to get mad. I mean, just like with the single mom thing, that's funny. It's real, but it's funny. Dudes know if they want a soft life, they're gonna have to create that shit. Um, the final point with Beyonce and her uh, and Jay Z are basically daring Grammys to not give her album in year. It would prove how. Yeah. That that's another that could be another thing. That'd be a good strategy. I mean, I mean, honestly, I don't know about I mean, yeah, but at the same time, I mean the album's gotta be good. Like, is it Grammy the year good? Uh so there's ways the Grammys can get around that. There's a couple of ways they can get around that. I mean, all it takes for somebody to make a comparable album. I mean, a comparable album that's good and they can just give it to them. And the question is, what's the gap between that album? And it's more. It's more so. Is she going to be featured in the country music awards, and she going to be invited there? And and if she's not, you know, are they going to boo her? It, it's going to be funny as fuck. But and, and and here's the thing that's crazy. The thing that's crazy is Beyonce may turn more people on to country music. That that. So the fact that you got all these people that are so fucking mad and so fucking upset. As if black people don't listen to white people, you know, music that white artists do. That's crazy as fuck. Like, you didn't have black people lose their shit over Eminem. I mean, let's be real about that. Now, people may get get into it, talk about, is Eminem the best rapper to ever live? You know, and they may get annoyed by that. But as far as Eminem being out there, I mean, I see people responding to Eminem stuff all the time. I mean, I'm talking about his newer stuff. Like, when he goes after, you know, Logic or whoever, or Machine Gun Kelly or other shit. Which what Machine Gun Kelly said about his daughter. I mean, you lucky Eminem don't kill you. Like real talk, people forget about how he used to be about his daughter. I'm like, uh, I don't care who you think you are, man. Like, there, there's a lot of black people that Eminem put money in their pockets. They have no problem dealing with a non-black person. You know, um, I don't, I don't know what 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 you on. You know, people keep saying to check that out. I never watched the game. I may I may look at it. So stay tuned. So anyway, but let's jump. But jumping back to this, um, uh, yeah, I don't even want to play the video because it's a relatively new video. I just wanted to talk. Uh, uh, but as far as say still at the it's, it, what's God said, what do I think about um, mixed women that don't like mixed men? I mean, well, mixed means a lot of different things, and people forget that. But as far as um, women can like who they want to like. I mean, I just chalked that up is. You got to understand, see, a lot of dudes, see, here's the problem that men have. Men have this thing where they think women like things because inherently that's just what it is that they like. That's not true. Women like things based on what they've been socialized on, based on what's taboo to them, based on what speaks to their dark desires. Um, And that just depends. You know, that depends on a lot of things like women, probably black, white women probably wouldn't like black men as much. If black men were more like your Carlton's and it wasn't a taboo there, which is ironic because that's because not having that is really a byproduct of racism and white supremacy. You know, you wouldn't have the super Negro. You wouldn't have that like ultimate definition of what a bad boy is and blah, 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 blah. You wouldn't have that. Ironically, a lot of this this King Kong stuff. And um, the fuck? a lot of this King Kong stuff, I know I'd be mad too, man. A lot of this King Kong stuff and a lot of this, you know, scaring white women, that's actually backfired with feminism and stuff. Hold on one second.
Ed do. Um, anyway. And so, you know, a lot of that is unforeseen byproducts over time. Over time. You know, and, and it's not anticipated with the next generation. So when they sit there and talk about a lot of stuff they talk about, they have nobody to blame but but themselves. But they don't do that. They don't do well with doing that, which is why they repeat the same shit uh, often. Now, uh, so as far as, like, quote-unquote, mixed women not liking me, like, I don't give I mean, honestly, let I, that's on them. Because the thing about it is, dude, there's this perception that light skinned dudes don't be getting don't be getting bitches, and dude, light skinned dudes don't need to be promoted to get bitches. So, like, like, so you know, people, I don't know why people like to believe that shit. I don't know if it makes them feel good, it gives them solace. But at the end of the day, these women can want who they want. They can want whoever they want for whatever reason that they want. And guess what? They gotta own what they deal with. That's the problem. The thing is, I come back to is when they want to give you a narrative story about why they're in the situation they're in. I'm like, yo, this is what I know. If you're 40, you went through your 20s and your 30s and you basically you basically mismanaged that shit. No matter what the fuck you want to say or what argument you want to make, that is a fact. That is that that is where you are. You you are where you are because of who you are. And And you don't really have the opportunity. You'll never have you will never achieve. What you could have got in your twenties and your early, you just won't. And 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 look, we're not talking about fucking winning lottery tickets and shit like that. Just real fucking. This is why Kim knew that when she got in the twenty nine to 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 basically lock in, and and um Sierra did too. It's a reason why these chicks try to lock in at like twenty eight, twenty nine. The ones that can. What's up? So at the end of the day, um. You know, when you look at like Sage Steel and and this and the stuff that she's saying, so she's talking to Tucker Carlson right here, and ultimately she's trying to talk about her time at ESPN and she's trying to act like white. She's saying stupid shit like white men don't have a voice, like white men are scared too, and and this is just very oppressive. Let's keep it all the way to fucking real. Look at who the fuck the owners of Disney are. Okay, let's just be. Let's stop being stupid. Look at who's the CEO of fucking Disney. Look at all the top brass in fucking Disney. Look at uh, who's running ESPN. These are white people. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? These are white men in particular. What are you talking about? Look at the major investors in Disney. Like, what are you, what are you talking about? And then the thing that kills me about Say Steel more than anything is Say Steel wouldn't even have a fucking job. She keeps talking about white men having a voice. Let's assume that they don't, which is bullshit, but let's assume they don't. Which let's be real. That's that's let's assume they don't. Do you think she'd have a fucking job? You think Say Steel would have a fucking job at ESPN and it wouldn't be some other white shit? Like seriously. You think she she thinks she would have a job? You think you would have had a career? And somebody um tried to say it's brave what she did. This was like a comment the anti put. No, it's not. She basically had a 20 year career with ESPN. She got hired in 2005, so she had what like a 17 year 18 year career with ESPN, and when she made a lot of money in this career. You chose to get a white dude. You chose when you was a light skinned bitch, and you probably could have got you um, a more pro- well producing Hispanic or a more producing black dude. You chose to get a white dude that you can be the breadwinner of because that's the tax you want. You were willing to pay to access whiteness and have you know babies that are that are pretty much white passing. That's what you chose. Sage Steele is not an ugly woman. She is like like Sage Steele is what in her um. She is 51 years old. This is what she looks like at 50. She is not an ugly woman. This is the bro. That's the life you knowingly chose. And don't play like you didn't know how white people were. Because she's even told stories about different stuff. I thought I was a maid. This is she knows how they are. And when you're mixed, you're more exposed to that than you otherwise are. Because they like what's really what you gonna do about it, honestly. 
because you got a white parent. This is the same shit that um, Aiko or Aikia, whatever her fucking name is, Aiko um, Simmons was talking about when she kept being called the N word um, by that white boy. They they are much more comfortable, and they also know you're not gonna crash out on them. Like like if you do that to a black woman, a black woman might haul off it and really just crash out on you. If you do that like that brazen. They might really crash out on your ass or they may go, um, they may call your brother. If you really come at them that brazen and you misfire with that. Yeah, she's 51. She's not an ugly woman. The problem with Say Steel is her personality. Say Steel has this, I'm not black and don't don't talk to me situation, which is slightly worse than um technically um Carrie Champion has it, but Carrie Champion has that Tony Charles from Grove. She has that, I'm just such a beautiful black woman that I shouldn't even be considered black. She has that shit going on. But but um but Sage is different. Sage is on some really I, I rather I'm supposed to be colored. We're supposed to have a middle group here. And then I but the problem is you live in a country where the majority is white. That colored shit only works, only plays in countries where white people are not the major, the clear majority. And America, even they will go the route of just add another group in. They'll go in and add white Hispanics before they um before they um get y'all in there. So you know it is what it is, and and she's very frustrated by that. That's that's what that is. It all tragic mulatto situations are not the same. Doja Cat's is slightly different than um hers, and it's it's a little bit different than Meghan Markle because Meghan Markle is white passing. That's the difference. So Meghan Markle deals with it in a little bit of a, in a slightly different way to even say it still. But even though you see what they were saying about Meghan Markle, uh, yeah, I I, I would agree with that, but it's got to be some really good benefits. Like, say he steals the type of person, yeah, but you're right, because the truth is, bitch, you think you're, you're taking up a white bitch's, you think you're taking up a white bitch's seat? You th- Is that what you think you're doing? You're taking up a black person's slot, and this is why black people have such an issue with her at ESPN, because say he steals is universally not liked at ESPN by black people, because she had that shit about, I only want to deal with white people, don't even talk to me. Even with the black women, say he steals is not even liked by black women at ESPN, and we know they don't like niggas. We know, you know, they don't like niggas, because she really thinks she's better than them. So... You know, if you look at this video, you'll see the you will literally see the pain. And she's talking to Carl Tucker, but it's like, yo, you're not talking about what you really want to talk about. And the thing why I wanted to do a video about this is white people created these rules. These are not rules that black people when black people say you black, they're basically saying at the end of the day, this is what these white people have said. So I mean, black people don't have the ability to enforce a one drop rule. But see, unfortunately, she wants to fuck with white people, so 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 she can't. So see, that's the problem. That's the problem. You want to fuck with the very people that's fucking you up. So at the same time, it's like it's this cat twenty two. You just gotta take it, and it's like a tectonic plate where all that energy and friction builds up. But look, if you actually look at how she's looking, she's looking like boy, she she could put a knife in somebody. Not necessarily Tucker. But and this is why she'll typically like if you notice, even in this video, she's defending white men. It's about look at you know, I wish I could be as brave as you. What the fuck are you talking about? And Anton kind of took a, a route that I don't really it's not that I don't agree with it, but he just went uh, on a tra- track that I wouldn't go on because again, Anton's got like strong conservative views and he wants to do it when it's class. And it's like, yo, it's not just class, it's not class over race, class and race go hand in hand. Like, uh, shout out to Warren Ballantyne. The DNA of America is race, class, and gender. And you have to kind of understand how that algorithm works. It's not just, like, y'all, like, too many people like to say it's class. It's not class. You can be, of a, like, if you're a black man, there is no class that can truly graduate you out of the racial shit. The, it, can, it can make it so you're not worth really fucking with. Like, if you fuck with a Robert Smith, well, you got to understand, you're going to deal with a lawyer. Y'all going it, to, it's a lot of stuff that's going to come with messing with certain black people with money. But if you don't know they have money, then you don't know. 
there's certain things, but that's if those people even have those defense mechanisms that money would give you. Like if you have life insurance, like if you have, um, um, if you a lawyer, you know, that you can call on retainer. Like most, a lot of black people don't think you even need that shit or their idea of class is their education. You damn sure can't educate your way out of how white people see you. And this is all white people know, but we know what system we're dealing with. And so he does this thing that Bernard does, where it's like, it's got to be anything but race bullshit. Which, you know, I fuck with Bernard Heavy, but that's the one thing. It's like, it can't, it just, these niggas have this like blindness where it's like, it can't be race. No matter, no matter what you show them, no matter what they see, they these motherfuckers could literally be be basically can go through a Rodney King situation and somehow come up with a reason why it ain't it, it wasn't racially motivated. And I'm and, and like I said, that's belief. That's belief. And and I don't I'm not or I'm not debating belief. At that point, it's like debating whether God is real or not to a Christian or atheist. One is gonna believe one, the other is gonna believe the other. I fuck, I fuck with both of them, but that's just one thing I disagree on. And I'm not, and I'm, I'm not one to qu- necessarily quickly say it's race, but I don't run away from that shit either. It was a dude that I was talking to, right? And he's getting his, um, his house appraised. He did a lot of shit to his house, and they playing. I wasn't, I was always, man. If you check, if you check for a lawyer, because well, I don't know if it's a racial shit. I'll fuck that, man. Get just in case. Because I already know how they are with that appraisal bullshit. I'm not even playing with them. You let them know. I'm not the I'm not the nigga to do that with. So you want to play that game, we can go right ahead. I'm not the one for that. So it's better that you move on to a soft target, a softer target. Because we ain't doing, we don't do soft target era, soft guy era, not soft target era. When you in the billionaire boys club, that's the ultimate race class gender on earth. Yeah, but even even Bill, depending on what level, I mean, even because billionaires still got to deal with the U.S. government, and if U.S. government is willing to fuck you up, like think about it. You know, uh, Robert Smith got a what was it, three hundred million dollar? He got a uh, one hundred million dollar accounting error. That lets you know, nigga, we can put the we can deploy the the Wesley Snipes playbook on your ass. And Wesley, remember, Wesley Snipes paid his taxes. They still put his ass in jail. So, and that's when, you know, when Robert Smith was starting to get a lot more louder about what he was doing. Now he does some of his stuff on the radar, but like, and he still does stuff. Like he's trying to bring broadband internet or high speed internet to um, HBCUs, you know, and they're kind of cool with that. Cause what the fuck is that going to really change? You, you need some place to put all these fucking immigrants, right? <laughs> so they'll let him get away with that shit. He'll, so a lot of his stuff got to be low key sanctioned, but it, it's not as bold as what he was doing before. It, it's not completely gone down, but it's slightly gone down because they let him know. They said you and you and, and Robert Robert Smith's got a lot of money right now. Robert Smith Robert Smith is worth nine point two billion dollars. And David Stewart's worth seven point six billion dollars. Now think about it. How much? How often do you actually hear about Robert Smith in the media? You should hear. You should hear about Robert Smith all the time. Robert Smith got almost three to four times more money than Donald Trump. Think about that for a second. So. Yeah, I just wanted to call you to this video. So like I said, make sure y'all check that out. I know we already 45 minutes in. Y'all got a second one. Just um, you know, um and by the way, I'm checking who's coming into this this bitch too. So if y'all come in here on some dumb shit, some of y'all got like, y'all will be kicked the fuck out. Y'all come in here, and, and I'm gonna tell you something too. If y'all share this 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 fucking um Discord link, do not do that. Do not fucking. I'm, I'm telling you that right now. Do not share this fucking Discord link because some of y'all be doing that shit. Now I, I consider that um I consider that 
yeah, that no, that's a no go. That's a fucking no go when y'all do that. I'm telling you that right now because what it is is y'all y'all may be cool with somebody, but a lot of these motherfuckers be be. In fact, like after like a certain amount of time, very quickly, I'm gonna disable the link I put in there. Because it be people that be trying to share the shit to fucked up people. And they come here only for the purposes of trying to, you know, snoop as to what's going on. Which is why I don't often, which is why I don't often share the link. And I mean, honestly, if y'all want to be high school like that, y'all can just take that somewhere else. What do you mean he's a poor tech billionaire? Yeah, it is treason. I can say that treason. No, I get what you're saying, because there's... <laughs> I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. No, not, not, no, that's not true. That's not true. That's not true. You don't get to where Robert... Because you got to think about it. Um, You got to think about it. That's what the entertainment sector's for. That's what the entertainment sector's for. There's no point in giving somebody that much money to do it. And by the way, Robert Smith is not the only one. Like, why why give Robert Smith that much money when you got people like Jay-Z, you know, Oprah, you know. In fact, the other dude is actually gaining on Robert Smith. Um, David Stewart, he's gaining on Robert Smith. And yes, he is married to a black woman. And Robert Smith was married to a black woman. No, that's not true. That's not true. Um, that's that obviously when you get in the NBA, there's still there's levels to the NBA, obviously. But um but everybody you know on the list ain't on the list. I mean, he's definitely up there. I mean, what well, he's up there in the top, you I would say I mean, obviously one hundred as far as individual. See, the trick that they give you, the trick that a lot of these people play is family wealth. See, most wealth isn't concentrated in one person necessarily. It's concentrated in a group through these trusts and shit. And so, like, for instance, the Mars family don't doesn't the people that come up with M&Ms and shit, they don't show up on the list because the list is about individual wealth. But that's not always. And by the way, even in individual wealth, there's a lot of um, people. Um, there's a lot of former politicians that have money in accounts that don't count because it's not, you know, Putin it would be up there. So, you know, anyway. Shout out to Marty. Make sure y'all check out Marty's videos. You know, his um in fact we're gonna we're gonna play his um since he's here. We're gonna play his um his reaction to Eddie Gordo real quick just to show you Actually, it's one other video I want to play first. Old nigga talk. I know it's been a minute since y'all had some old nigga talk. Some good old old nigga talk. Yo, we got soft guy Eric trending so hard that we're even on YouTube right now. We are on. This is wrong. This new generation of old men. Back in my day, we didn't we didn't, we didn't we didn't have this soft guy era. We paid all the bills, one hundred percent. And when our wife divorced us, they took everything. Guess what? That's what men do. We got I got it all back. It took me about twenty more years to get it back, but I got it. So y'all listen to this little salty right here. Y'all listen to this little soft man right here. Cause back in my day, he wouldn't last two seconds. I gotta charge my Android. Hold on. <laughs> this nigga talking about how I gotta charge my Android. That's some funny get. That's some funny shit. That nigga was dead ass serious too. Yeah, yeah. I thought Marty. I thought you laughed at that. Hey man, look. I'm not gonna bring him up, but hey, that's a smart. Hey. <laughs> <coughs> anyway, he said that haircut isn't in reg. <laughs> Don't let me do no AI. Be like swabbing the decks. We'll, we'll, trust me, the AI pictures have come a long way. I 
I don't know if y'all have seen, um, let me see, hold on one second. I swear we need to make this a comic book. Nigga said that shit ain't in Nigga, that shit ain't in rag. I don't know if that's an old man. It might not be, but it the the original person that put this up was was talking as if that was true. Shout out to Compassionate Callout, y'all. Make sure y'all subscribe to him because this is his. FYI, I swear we need to make this a comic book strip. I kind of upscaled it a little bit. He said, save yourself, black man. Soft guy era. Drizzle. <laughs> we like don't do this drizzle. You should do the um like the return of the drizzle. Or I don't know. I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna come up with a better catch catch line on that. But yeah, do it like a movie. We folks need to start doing movie um posters of this shit. <laughs> Got that bitch out here in the rain. He says, we paid all the bills. Yeah, you couldn't handle it. You didn't come up with a swab in the decks part two. So anyway, and talk about back in my day. You know who that remind? I ain't gonna say who that remind me of, but that that remind sound like some shit J Speed would say, man. <laughs> <laughs> then he sent me a fucking email with in all caps. I'm about to open that shit up and read, get cussed out. Nigga sent me some malware email. Oh yeah. Um let me show y'all. I told y'all that I wasn't gonna do that drizzle drizzle shit. Uh I was gonna do something else. Let me show y'all real quick. By the way, I don't got my if y'all if y'all hit me with the cash app, I appreciate it. I ain't got it up right now, so give me a second. I had to charge my phone. I had to charge my Android like that dude did. He said, I got George Wood. Hey man, kudos to him for being on social media though. You know? Old people can be on social media too if they know how to use it. So rather than me doing the drizzle, like saying drizzle, drizzle. Cause you know we got to be different over here. We're gonna do this. You know, we got to do one for white boys. Yeah, PK. Another one. So we got different ones. I like this one. 
This is my favorite, though. Oh, yeah, this one's good. I need to get a black dude version. Don't let me work on this on AI. This is another good one. I like this one. This looks like something BGS would like. I need to get this, find a way to get this in motion. <laughs> you just do this and do this in the in the image. <laughs> you know, these chicks start getting mad. You just put this in the back with some song. Like, trust me, I'm going to add some stuff to this and fuck it up real bad. This is my favorite one, though. If I can get a black, black, black one, when these hoes get mad, when they hurt, keep putting the salt on. <laughs> Why are you mad? It's too salty. You too salty. This one reminds me, what's that song? Um the uh song with Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg. <laughs> Yo, these people are gonna get fucked up, man. Oh, yeah, he said, that's yeah, for sure. He said, yo, back in my day. I'm like, yo, y'all the ones that basically got these women started on this bullshit. This is why they think, niggas like you is why they think all black men are stupid. Like, these dudes we talk about back in their day. I said, dudes like you is why they think we all dumb. Yo, anybody see that Drake diss? Everybody saying that shit's trash. They said that shit better be AI Drake. Everybody saying that shit better be AI. They're like, I hope it's AI, man. Please don't let that be the real thing. Drake be like, man, my writers, my writers fail me, man. I didn't check they work. Yeah, I'm about to check the ones you're talking about, PK. That's why. One second. Oh, yeah, you, you fucking up. I don't even know if I, I, only, I even want to show this. But yeah. He said he tried to diss like eight niggas at one song. That nigga tried to give, uh, everybody tried to give, you mean the apology? That nigga did a diss song and called it the apology. 
<laughs> I'm playing. <laughs> J. Cole did a diss song called it We Are the World. We are the world. He did that shit at his his old festival. Anyway, you're yeah, gonna put some more salt in it. Is it cooking? <laughs> anyway, 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 anyway. All right, y'all. This has been, you know, yet another video. Give y'all something else to uh, deal with. Here you go, um, Christian. Yeah, y'all got like. 10 minutes, 10 minutes to get in that Discord, and you know, I'm I'm changing the link, FYI. Alright, y'all. If y'all hit, hit me with the cash out, much appreciated. Like I said, I ain't got to see it. I ain't got my phone in front of me. But appreciate y'all for real. I'll shout y'all out in the next video. With that being said, this is Edward. So, oh yeah, oh yeah, that was the one I was gonna do. I was gonna do kind of a play of um, just so y'all can see. And these reactions are in like the beta stages, so keep that in mind. So hopefully we'll do some really strong stuff because we jump in that reaction game, like you know that shit ain't contra that shit ain't controversial. So. show we are in brazil as you know live streaming three days a week but today we have a reaction for tekken 8 with a new character named gordo now i believe he's brazilian going capoeira right yeah i saw it sounds interesting okay so we are going to check this out we're going to just kind of like react to it for the first time I'm like nigga how you don't know who the fuck eddie is give me your black card <laughs> Punch to punch. Mm -hmm. Unreal Engine, of course. I told Marty he got to be more hype with these, these man. You got to sell them more. <laughs> That's how they be doing it. Oh. Você vai ter o melhor da capoeira. <laughs> that fucking Killmonger haircut everybody doing. Thank God they gave you the alternate skin. It looks like, nigga, we can't do that. Get ready for the next battle. Okay, he got the hairstyle like Brazilian, right? <laughs> <laughs> Ah, okay. All right. Beat that Capoeira bitch. Capoeira is a most advanced. It's a very, very full martial art. How accurate do the dancers look in this game? And I love the outfit, like the colors of the Brazil flag. I love it. Okay. okay, yeah, she did a good job. So I get that. Okay, so she's actually because I saw I saw it, but it was on mute. So this is the first time I'm hearing it. So okay, yeah, I love the commentary she gave. It's good. Very good. So his moves are pretty accurate. What? His moves are pretty accurate. Yeah. It's game okay. over. Baby. Here come the white bitch. And because like in Capoeira, they jump a lot. They have all these moves that looks like a dance. <laughs> like he he do a lot of the basic step part that is like you put your leg behind and your 
in your hand, something like that. This guy you was- know, this kind of gave me a thought of showing her like the older trailers because Eddie, Eddie. Okay, so I didn't know that Marty, you were new to Tekken. Eddie, Tekken three came out. I know you niggas know when did Tekken three come out? It's been a minute. Tekken three came out in two thousand and in nineteen ninety seven. So that's how old. So that's how old Eddie has been around. So, yeah, so they've had a lot of time to kind of perfect how he does his stuff. I mean, a lot of these moves are traditional moves he's always done. That's the thing about Tekken. You know, Tekken don't change shit up. They just upgrade it. So. And I really love the colors, the yellow, the blue, and the green. He did a very good outfit. You also should show her Christy as well. I love the hair. He's curious. This must be a special right here. Oh, they put the colors in all the molds. Everything is red, is yellow, blue, and green. I love it. Yeah, so everybody, you know, they honestly that hairstyle was real. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Like people forget that shit, man. Like, yo, Tekken 3 was a shit. Like, I'll watch Game of Views to do, like, low-key documentaries on, like, um, I forget who the dude is. He's a big channel. Um, and he taught, he went through, like, as far as the release of Tekken 8, he kind of went through, like, the history of all the games. And, and he was, he's old, he's, like, I think older, slightly older than me. And so he knows. And he, he was in game development. So he could speak on that. He was just talking about, he was giving a good idea of it. So it was good. Yeah, so um, it's going to be real exciting because I kind of know how to aim the keywords and stuff, to aim the keywords, aim the titles and everything. And this is not, yeah, so it's going to be fun. So y'all definitely, uh, he said Street Fighter Turbo better than Tekken. <laughs> Tekken 3. Tekken 3 was like revolution. I mean, Tekken, Tekken 1 was good. I remember Tekken 1, Tekken 2. You know, people forget Soul Blade. Man, nigga used to play for money. Niggas be fighting over there. Man, it's bullshit. Nah. Pull what down? What what he pulled down? What happened? I mean, I'm I'm a fan of all of them. Oh, I don't know. I, I don't know. Are you talking about the single? Wait, wait. Uh... Oh, J. Cole. J. Cole. Um, put... J. Cole apologized. I, man, you got to ask him, man. That shit was retarded, man. I, I don't even want to explain that shit. That shit makes me mad even even explaining it. And I don't even... Um... No, he's talking about J. Cole. He's talking about J. Cole. So anyway, y'all. So like I said, I'm seriously, man, for real. Like, be looking, be looking, um, because when we start doing those reactions, I'm going to let you know. And what I'm probably going to do is I'm probably going to put, because I'm deadly serious about this, I'm probably going to put y'all on, like, an email list. Um, Obviously, ain't nobody telling y'all to kind of you, you watch stuff, but especially when it's, like, a trailer or something, and it's a couple of minutes, I'm probably going to put y'all on an email list, like, seriously. Maybe, depending on the, the, the stuff, because it's, it's a lot of stuff we're going to try to do with these, um, this. I don't know if it's going to... I got to think about like how to do it. Cause I don't want to just, we just react to every little thing. I need to see how people do it. Cause here's the thing you have. Um, I, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say that online, Marty, you know, and I'll hit you up and Marty shorts are doing very well as well. Like I'm not going to play the short that's doing, uh, doing well, but I'm going to put the link in the chat. Um, So I'm not, yeah, I'll put the link in. Yeah. So as you can see, this one is like his, this one is, um, this one is older, but this one is actually only a couple of days old and this one's already at 6.2. So definitely check that out, man. And let me, let me know what you, um, think about it. Cause she talks about like, you know, sexualization of Brazilians and stuff like that. 
Yeah, so hit that up. It's only like a minute long. Remember, if they're shorts on YouTube, they're no longer on 60 seconds. So this one's actually low-key blowing up. And like I said, go through all them short shit. But yeah, this one is doing very well. Let me see. Is um, no, no. we're not playing it, but I want to see. Is it? Yeah, and leave a comment, y'all. Go in there, like. Why? If you watch the video, watch it. Leave a comment in there. You know, yeah. Yeah, she was talking about the sex tourism. She wasn't being stupid about it. She was being matter of fact about it. But it's good getting an opinion. And keep in mind, this when what Marty is doing is Marty's talking to like an inter. This is like an international thing, where you know it's like an international get together where people from different parts and they're happening to be in a world, but they happen to be in Brazil and they put their flag. So this is like something where you know they they're coming here to talk and stuff like that. So it's a very good um thing. So, yeah, definitely um, watch it, help it out. And like I said, um, those reactions are going to be good because we might start reacting to TV shows. But here's the thing. It don't have to be TV shows. It could actually be, um, like I said, I'm going to hit Marty. Um, yeah, I'm going to hit Marty about this later um, behind the scenes because it actually now I got a better idea of what, what I think we should do it first. Because the thing about the TV shows is the TV shows require, uh, like, some extra shit because it's kind of like – it could be copyright stuff with that. So, yeah. So, make sure y'all hit that up. All right, y'all. So, like I said, I gave y'all... So I see you want to come in here and troll. Why do you care what I'm doing on my channel? And you know what's crazy? What's crazy is people will come in here and say some stupid shit like, why do you care what women are doing? But then act like feminism isn't caring about what men are doing. Just, just, just a thought. I'm not about to go on a rant on that because that dude got banned and he's coming in here with Marcus Garvey. What the fuck you talking about? All right. All right, y'all. With that being said, again, this is Edward signing off. Peace.